I wish I could say that. I wish I could say that. Join me while I wish I could say Hopefully you don't you know, see anything because it's really hot. You know, there's even a tornado watch in the south. Uh, it's really warm. It's really hot. I hope you don't see me. You see me here exposed. No, I think I can go until here, but you get a point. Uh huh. Both teaching guys. Definitely about the constitution because you know I'm actually very aware of this. In German cases. The central founding harm of this country. Point one. Point two. I think Randall is correct that there are a great many tragedies in this country. A great many uh victims. That's why I didn't want to be uh, myself subject of that shit. What about German Americans? Awesome Americans. Yeah, like white people that like me, sorry for that. America has already extended reparations to Japanese Americans interned uh, during World War II. Oh, yeah. Already extended reparations to Native Americans. Already extended and now they're there. Definitely doing that about those people uh, here. People, as in in Alaska, I could just tell you names. Like, like, like all I ask somebody buy my shit country, here. or show it or at least acknowledge at least acknowledge on a, on a journalistic level that I was attacked in the street outside my damn fucking house here. which I cannot even keep you know, that's the point I need some money Yeah, like so many other groups in this country. I don't want to be, I don't want to be uh, a porn star, you know. But news breaks at the weekend too. State media has announced that Russian law federal families who just moved through the bush to safety. This is very scary moment for a lot of young people. Nobody was quite sure where this had come from. Stay connected. Count on news out from the BBC. Fucking complicated, nonetheless. Uh, I mean, we don't want to be attacked by a guy who just looks like the guy I'm gonna paint. Bro. Sorry for that. I mean, I know he's from the where he's from. You know, I mean, I mean that one is some silly one is coming from uh, you No, know, but the guy who attacked me here, I mean, sorry, is from the other side of the street. That's New York City. Sorry for that. Two this is two dollars. Take my money. Sorry for that. Sorry for that. Yeah. Yeah. We got you. Welcome sir. back. I'm John Donvan, and this is Intelligence Squared US. Let's jump right back into our discussion. I'm sitting here with you from Kind of Intelligence Square. Intelligence Square. An appreciable amount, maybe a considerable amount, of the pushback against reparations has to do with racism. I mean, I, I think that there are a good many people who basically say, with respect. 
respect the black people, you know, shut up. What are you respect the white about? people that didn't walk around their damn right about us. You just don't respect the slavery. Well, slavery was banned in certain ways. You still have a choice. At least it got you away from Africa. I mean, that, the, uh, that, that is part of the, of the discussion. Yeah, because I know we are so really right around us. I agree actually. with you that we I have to keep an eye on the problem of racism. I think we have to keep an eye on some of the problems I have currently because of the administrative difficulties, especially if we're talking about cash payments to individuals. So, one thing that concerns me, I can't complain, again, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm from South complain. Carolina. I think that I'm my people to say were probably enslaved, but you know, there were... were there are eight kids that kind of saved me, in the age oh, so of you know, they just uh, took me you know, also, what like, you know what I mean? There were, um, black slave owners in the, what the, fuck in the was age that? of slavery. I mean, to what extent do we really want to, you know, get down in genealogies? What about black people who came to the United States after the age of slavery? Do we really want to just... How much do we want to distinguish I really want to see them. I really want to do that. I'll, I'll stop there. I'd like to hear I a response. I see it all the time, but then I'm intimidated. Also. I think you raise some interesting points. Um, I think you raise some interesting points. I think you raise some interesting questions with respect to the administration of cash payments. Yes, it makes me. But let us know this. Let, let's start with the whole matter of uh, black folks who are the descendants of uh, free blacks versus enslaved um, Africans. Black folks who are the descendant of free blacks, those free Africans live beside enslaved Africans in the midst of a slaveocracy. Uh, thereafter, their ancestors lived in uh, the midst of Jim Crow, in the midst of segregated housing, in uh, the midst of, uh, and midst of racial terrorism. So disaggregating the descendants of free blacks from others, I, I think, is somewhat difficult. But you have people like uh, William Darity who made the case that reparations can be extended to those who are the descendants of enslaved Africans, who at least have one such ancestor. The point being here is we have in this country repertory schemes, repar reparations extended to people based upon them being related to uh, victims of the original harm. But in this instance, no the harm that the original the harm continues into the, into the present. Point one. Point two, Point. how is it that Germany can extend billions of dollars of reparations to the victims and descendants of the Holocaust, but the United States, this great superpower, can't get itself together in terms of the accounting to at least have a conversation. Well, I mean, a you can't get themselves together. I don't want them to get themselves together. Why it is? We're not being an amazing form of way to come to the solution. To make you give it money and the accounting of the administration uh, should be a conceptual and analytic non story. Uh, I think the lawyer can help me to represent me. I mean, I realize that I can't get over a lot of here. After all, I'm, you know, we're talking right now as we've talked in the past. And so, you know, I, I, I don't think that this should be off the table at all. And I'm glad that it is on the table so that we're discussing it. In the discussion, however, at some point, if we're talking about, you know, allocating funds, if we're talking about allocating resources, administrative problems do arise. And, and you know, it's... They, they do have to be faced, and I, I guess I'm questioning whether some of these administrative problems are <laughs> so difficult and so potentially divisive that they bring into question, you know, whether they're worth it. And then finally, again, I'd like to hear your response. I think at present we have many scandals in America. We have this rich country in which there are um, people in you know, all over the country.
enslaved. I'm saying, let's take a look at everybody who is in need and address everybody who is in need, no matter what the history of that need is. And as the, why isn't that the way to go? Why isn't distributive justice the way to go as opposed to reparative justice? Can I just get a clarification, yeah. Randall? In, in talking about everybody in need, are you are you talking about African Americans in need or everybody in need? Everybody, including white people. You know, yeah. there, 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 there are plenty of white people in need. And here, I think we have to grapple with yeah. the complications of history. I mean, the fact that exactly. it, my folks were refugees from the Jim Crow South, I have lived a better life, a more enriched life than people who were privileged when my parents had to flee South Carolina. And that's just, a, you know, it's, it's an ironic thing. I'm not, I'm not saying it was, a, you know, that, that they're having to flee was a good thing. I, but, you know, history is just full of paradoxes. The fact of the matter is that the discipline, the, the, the incredible discipline that they uh, embodied yeah, has helped me to live better than some of the people who did not have to undergo that discipline. So, again, I don't need it. What about, you know, what about these poor people, I don't know, white people in Appalachia and other places, Native Americans, Latino Americans, I don't care who you are. If you are in need, our country should try to do something to alleviate that need. Why isn't that a better way of going than trying to, you know, it, but it, it doesn't say anything about it doesn't say anything about the history of slavery that that sort of response. I'm sorry, absolutely. That would not say anything about the history of slavery. No, I don't think that's true. No, I don't think that's true because the history of slavery and the history of Jim Crow, the true. history of racial repression, are all is listening. why uh, there are. It, Portion, you know, in terms of proportions, is why there's such a large proportion of African Americans who are in need. And, 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 and but, but Randall, let, 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 might I note a couple of things? Sure. Meaning, obviously, because more people black need you. You know, know it's always, up, I mean, there are always people uh, better off than me. I mean, I understand that way. But, family narrative you want to be killed? Just killed as a skateboard? I know. When you say your family fled the Jim Crow South uh, for the most of the freedoms uh, elsewhere in terms of the Great Migration, right? No, 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 by the way, let me just interrupt. We're not talking about 100 years ago. My parents fled the Jim Crow South in the mid 19th, in the, in the, in the, in the late 1950s. So we're not talking right, about yeah. a long time ago. Go on, I'm sorry. Yes. But your family narrative. As a facet and a reflection of the Great Migration, as so well described by uh, Isabel Wilkerson, mm -hmm. they oh, yeah. did so, as did so many families, Impossible. as a consequence of the second class treatment that they, uh, the treatment they received as second class citizens in states like South Carolina, North Carolina, Georgia, uh, the Deep South, and the racial terrorism. And this yeah. racial terrorism is a reflection of what happened during slavery, which is to say the slave patrols, the night riders, they gave rise to Southern law enforcement and the Ku Klux Klan and the racial terrorism that literally chased black folks out of the South into the North. The point being here is the premise of reparations is literally a part of the genesis story of your family. Point one. Point two, you cannot address that racially specific harm with just race neutral neutral policy of descriptions. The point being here is reparative is justice is no. necessary along with distributive justice. We're not talking about pity poor stuff. families in Appalachia and elsewhere against black folks who are suffering the consequences uh, of slavery and neo-slavery and its aftermath in the yeah, present. Yeah. We're not pitting these groups against one another. Point two. Point three. We're not pitting the past against the present. This whole notion that we have to achieve um, a problem-free 
Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I got so much them, but no money. I actually just uh, have to pay them again. took them away from me. I mean, what the fuck is that shit? Uh-huh. Takes two. Nice. Nice. Somebody writes me that. Well, man, that's cool. Somebody is writing me that. For once. But he is really... And amazing, you know, the person who was beaten up by the police into pieces, leaving an off, so he and the rose. Exactly what this is car, city of money, meaning money not going towards my painting, this is target being annoyed. You see, that's the problem. You can only collect people who are like, well, not people like me, but now. 9-11 I didn't get anything because why earlier, earlier, fucking office was in the wrong place. So after you know what I mean? The Japanese Americans during the Second World War, ultimately by the 1980s, um, that made a lot of people uh, really fancy wealthy down there, the you know, and that's just not a stupid story. How wealthy people got even wealthy. Yeah. People who had been interned each in reparations that did not make anybody whole and in terms of the debt that we were talking about before there's really no practical number yeah, that can be produced that can make cool. anybody whole so you know? I'm wondering whether you actually are talking <sighs> about the principle of, of having to pay something in order to say something about slavery $20,000 let's say for a penny here would be amazing people catch up Catching up with painting. I cannot catch up with painting. That's the point here, fucking shit. How can I pay? How can I pay those taxes? Yes. The math becomes a means by 
my wish of sending a moral message. That is to say, we recognize not merely slavery, but the continu continuation of slavery from 1865, from the, from the end of uh, so you see... slavery into the present.
of emancipation, whether you want to call it so-called or not, but emancipation, slavery being made illegal, there was a recognition that just being told, okay, go, without anything in a bank account, without any property, uh, was not a fair starting point, that to get going, that, that, the, that the free and slave people would need a little capital to do something, to, to get going. And as you say, that was denied. But to me, I'm bringing it into the conversation to ask, was there a, rep, a rep, uh, in terms of timing, we've talked about too many years have passed, but at the time, was there a recognition that reparations were actually justified and called for in very much in the terms we're talking about now, which is we're going to deliver capital to the victims. There was a fight. There were some radical Republicans, particularly Thaddeus Stevens, who recognized that the newly freed people would need, you know, would, would need more than mere freedom. There was a Confederate general who would ask, you know, well, what's happened with uh, emancipation? said, well, they've gotten, quote, nothing but freedom. In fact, uh, one of Eric Foner's wonderful books has that title, Nothing But Freedom. Um, there were people who recognized that there would be a need for some more, you know, reparationist type support. O. o. Howard, one of uh, one of Sherman's generals, one of the, the founder of Howard University, uh, Howard University was very much on this and, and 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 argued in favor of allocating resources for the freed people. So that was very much needed. As you know, and and, and that's been recognized over time. Again, um, you know that, that that has been part of the freedom story just like frankly affirmative action i mean affirmative action has a certainly in its origins had a very strong reparationist um that was that was its that was its main propulsion um so you know reparations warrants being in the discussion um again i think though there is the question at this point of, you know, what are your priorities? And I don't want to repeat myself in saying that as, as strong as the arguments for reparations are, um, in, in, in a society that has never been as diverse as it is now, in a society that's in the 21st century, you know, what do we need? I think we need a, 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 a reformist politics that tries to embrace everyone, that tries to make a potential beneficiary out of all of the, you know, many groups that constitute American society. You know, one, one, one thing I might note here is a couple, well, a couple of things. This notion that the diversity increasing diversity in the country mutes the ability to call for racially specific um, mediation reparations policy. I think we underestimate uh, the capacity of this country, the uh, moral capacity of this country, and the policy capacity of this country. You know this. So if in the wake of George Floyd's death, the Black Lives Matter movement as reflected in 25 plus million Americans across 550 jurisdictions in this country taking to the streets. The majority of these Black Lives Matter protests, in the majority of them, the majority of the people were not black. There was a multiracial, multi ethnic response to a racially specific harm, namely that the uh, police brutality in this country fact of the matter is that we need not compromise to finding the problem in order to get support for addressing the problem. And so the point being is, if we were to address um, sexual violence in this country, it would be impossible for us to talk about it without recognizing the fact that women are most often the victims of sexual violence. Similarly, when it comes to talking about the economic violence in this country, we have to speak about it with a certain racial specificity because of the racial violence literally inscribed, encoded in the Constitution um, and that resonates, reverberates throughout American history into the present. The point being here is that we don't have to homogenize this discussion of 
was maybe I'm not, maybe I'm shortchanging the capacities of the country. And maybe you're correct because, frankly, in the last few years, um, I do, uh, the United States of America uh, has gone down in my books. That's right. I have less esteem for my country because of what has happened in the last several years. I do have a, I have lowered expectations. Uh, I, 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 I guess I really, I don't uh, have as much faith in uh, America uh, as I used to. And frankly, I hope that you, uh, I, I hope that you're right. I hope that you're right. I hope that I am wrong on this one. Cornell, do you, do you anticipate getting a check someday? I had a grandfather, in terms of hoping to get a check, I had a grandfather by the name of the Reverend Pompey LaValley, who was born, a great-grandfather who was born a slave. Um, he lived into the 40s. My great-grandmother made a quilt from his pants, called the Bridges, a cloth quilt. My great-grandfather, who was a slave, slept under it as a man. I slept under the same quilt. As a boy, my great grandfather lived to see at least the beginning, or at least the um, uh, Smith versus All Right. He, he, he lived to see at least some of the foundation being laid for the modern civil rights movement. I'd like to believe that I want to live to see um, checks being cut, but more importantly, Repertory justice, broadly conceived, broadly defined, realized in this country, and the racial wealth gap in this country bridge. And I can be accused of being an unrepentant optimist, but I would note here that the folks who have most advanced civil rights and social justice in this country, in the main, did not have a strong empirical or historical case for their optimism and their hope. But as I have long believed, you know, hope is not empirically demonstrated, it's morally chosen. I gotta believe that. We have an interesting thing that's happening here. I mean, I guess you're more the optimist. I think that given the racial fractiousness, given the racial resentment, given this just the the the, the proliferation of racism in the United States, it's, that's one of the things that makes me think that the reparations campaign is is frankly, I think that there is more hopefulness in the thinking of, let's say, an A. Philip Randolph, or in the thinking of, you know, Martin Luther King Jr. in his later period. I mean, poor people's campaign. Uh, you know, and, and frankly, you know, maybe that's unrealistic too. But I, I, again, my sense is there's there's more of a chance of getting the big army that we're going to need for any major. Uh, resource allocation. I think there's a better chance of getting that big army with the big tent, with the not race specific, with the more universal language framework than with race specificity. That 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 I guess I'm basically that's my bottom line, I suppose, at this moment. I hear that, but I, I, here's one thing I, I have to. And it's a question I have to pose. How is it that our generation, beneficiaries, children of affirmative action and the civil rights movement, how is it that we get to be less aspirational than our forebears? In other words, the case, the, the, the case for optimism with respect to the Voting Rights Act, the Civil Rights Act, the Fair Housing Act, would have to be more pessimistic than the case for reparations. Right? So in other words, black, black people will be, like, we, we talk about uh, police brutality in 2021, but when we look at the lynching that raids through the better part of the 20th, 20th century... Isn't that funny? Uh, you know, the, 
listen to all this shit. Anyhow, that was uh, another reverence to why don't you appear to go there. Reparations, I think we got the pain because the success of the past for sure not I mean my past forget about it forget about it infusion of cash for me necessary yeah I mean like black feminism and then we in the towels or whatever that and that's crap sorry for that because I mean for Los Angeles I would love to go to Los Angeles again, sorry for that. Because my friend, Joe Vigo, Joe and Rose, he goes, look at it, like, why don't I, to, uh, to I mean, this is all the reason well, why I'm okay, sure. I guess part of what's going on, we have, you know, competing aspirations. Um, the race specific uh, know, Robbie, uh, campaign right, um, that Cornell has in mind, uh, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of decency in it. Um, I, I I just have my you know my questions about it that I've already art articulated. My aspiration, and I don't think it's a lesser aspiration. But I think it's somewhat different aspiration. My aspiration is for a society that you know each other, kind of knows everybody. Yeah. I overdid it. I feel already embarrassed. Sorry. I think that's a, a larger framework, I and I think it is a framework that might be able to um, avoid, to some extent, the racial fractiousness in our society. And I guess that's where I'll plant my flag for the moment. I feel embarrassed. Thank you, Cornell. To write the most. Well, that's great. Let's just say, as always, it's great being conversation. Uh, uh, Randall Kennedy, I always learn a lot, and um, he makes me more aspirational. I also simply note this, that racial specificity by no means suggests racial exclusivity, right? In other words, we can talk about the racial harms in our society. I like that talk. In specific terms, in historical terms, in Because then we get the news on top of it. Okay. I replenish your mind because I really want to get this training little moving today. I'm really down with it. I want to really take this shit. I cannot lose more time sneezing around. It's still, it's still only four o'clock. Can't go out every night. I mean, I'm gonna go out. Maybe nine o'clock. How many hours do I have left? I want to get something done tomorrow. Right so I'm really done with the thing. Anyway, that's it.